Brian Johnston is here. He's also a first timer on the call. So let's show him some love as well. And he's going to present on tips and tricks for developing elegant UI UX in Canvas apps. Ryan, take it away. Awesome. Thank you, David. And let me get my screen share up here. Make sure that we get all looking. Okay. Are we seeing everything as we expect? It is, yes, it is loaded. Awesome. Well, hey, thanks so much for uh, allowing me to present on the call. I've gotten so much from this community and uh, grateful get to get to share back just a little bit. Uh, I am from Dallas, Texas. My background was as a full stack a web developer, front end and back end, and uh, have fallen in love with Power Apps. And that's now uh, my primary focus. And kind of as a front end and back end developer, I'm passionate about function and form and so many uh, Canvas apps. Uh, come out of the, come out with just out of the box uh, controls and designs and looks, and there's you know just sort of the certain look to a lot of power apps. And I've kind of taken the perspective that um, uh, if a power app looks like a power app, then I've not done a great job with design. But so many of us do not come from a graphic design background, and so I wanted to offer just some tips and tricks to make your to level up your power apps look. And um, I won't be able to cover everything I'd like to today. And so follow me on LinkedIn. Uh, I've posted a tutorial video just this week, and we'll have some more coming up on some more tips and tricks on leveling up your design. So we're going to couple uh, hit like three elements today. The first one I'm going to uh, mention is the use of the HTML text control. Uh, if you're not using the HTML text control, don't let it freak you out. Don't let it scare you. It's so powerful. And uh, just to give you an example of that, I'm sure most of you realize this isn't just like a PowerPoint slide deck. It is actually a Canvas app. And you can see our lovely a card here that behind it, uh, everything is blurred out. It's semi-opaque. You've got this nice uh, shadowed border around the edge. There's a really light white border and everything blurs out just beautifully uh, when uh, it's on top of stuff. And this is created using the HTML text element and some custom CSS that you don't have to know CSS uh, and a lot of HTML to use it. So let me just show you exactly how this works. We'll go back into our edit. We will make our uh, text here disappear. And let's take a look here. This is our HTML text control. And, um, oh, we're in that old, the, the new version of that, does old version of the new designer that doesn't let us drag this to be larger. I just discovered a tip yesterday, by the way, that you can go in and change your um, authoring settings and get that back. So I'll be doing that straight away. Anyhow, we put a div inside of our HTML text and assign it a width uh, that is the same as our HTML control. I'll explain why this is here in just a second. And then we come in and we add our CSS for this look, which is actually known as glass morphism. Uh, the guys are over at Hype4 Academy sort of coined this term. And you don't have to know what any of this means. Uh, just go to the Glass Morphism CSS generator. I think David's got the link for that. He'll put it somewhere, but you can just Google it, Glass Morphism. And you can drag around, create as much blur as you want. I love a blur setting of about four. You can update your transparency, change your background color, get it exactly the way you want. So we're going to go 4.0 and 0.4, copy our CSS, come into our app, paste that in, and you're good to go. That will create this look with the rounded corners, the blur, the shadow, everything all done. The only thing that you'll have to do is if you look at our box shadow here, the largest uh, shadow piece is 32 pixels. So we've got to leave a margin of 32 pixels on all sides uh, to give us a nice symmetrical look and room for the shadow. So that's where we add our margin into the CSS. And because of that 32 pixel margin, the size of our div has to be reduced by 32 pixels on all sides. So we subtract 64 from the total width of our HTML uh, text block, except the height is minus 65. I will help you to not bang your head against the wall like I did for a long time before I figured this out. If you have a height of a div that is exactly the height of your HTML text block, you're going to get a scroll bar for reasons unknown. Maybe Shane Young has the answers to this one. But the solution is simply to subtract a pixel from your height and that scroll bar disappears. And so that's one use of the HTML text block. I'll show you that in use here in a production app. Uh, that we'll use for our last two little tips and tricks. And that is, uh, if you click any of uh, the buttons that give you a pop-up modal on this app, 
you'll see that the background blurs out nicely and that's using the HTML text control as well with a nice blur in the background. So there's so many ways that you can use HTML text. The gradients that you see up here, that's HTML text, um, et cetera. But I wanna go on now to talking about theming and colors. So this is an app that I designed uh, for a fleet manage, it's a fleet management tool for a large church with like 40 or 50 vehicles that they have to get uh, sorted out. And um, there are multiple apps for this organization, and we want them all to have the same colors and theming. And if the marketing department decides they want to change things up, we don't want to have to go into all of our apps and change every single one of their colors. And so what we've done uh, is created a table. Uh, this is a SharePoint org. So we've created a, a table in SharePoint, do it in Dataverse, SQL, it doesn't matter. Just use an external data source where you put all of your colors. And so this is kind of my naming convention, lots of different ways to do it, but this is mine. Um, and then put your color in another column. Now, I use text color, which uses the PowerFX function color value, but I would actually recommend uh, putting comma separated RGB values in here so that you can, instead of using the color value function, which has no ability to control alpha, that is your transparency, that you can use the RGBA function, bring in this color to that function, and then you can also control your alpha values on the fly. I use hex, it's across all the apps live and learn, the next one I'll use RGBA. And by the way, you could also use this concept if you have icons or other things that are stored across uh, multiple apps in your tenant, you could put it all in here, maybe create another column for type. And so you could have a type color, a type icon, and have your SVG data in here. It's a great tool for storing things externally. And then you just come into your app, I have it uh, in OnStar. You could use environment variables for this too, by the way. Uh, there's plenty of ways to do it. And I import all of my colors into var colors, and then I can just reference them throughout the app. So here we've got this lovely gradient that again uses the HTML text element uh, control, and we reference those colors var primary, var secondary. You know, if I want to change that up, then it changes the colors right then and there. And of course, um, if you wanted to, you could easily do a, a find and replace and change all of it if you wanted to. Uh, but still have it reference those colors. The next thing I want to talk about is customizing input controls. Um, so our out-of-the-box Power App controls uh, for inputs are very square and boxy. They don't look great. And modern controls, man, they're coming along, and I've seen the stuff planned for 2024, but they're just not ready for prime time. So much that you can't control the properties uh, for you know, your font size and colors without you know, using their baked-in themes throughout the whole app. So I still use the traditional control but customize it. But I don't want to have to go through and customize every single one of these inputs. And so what I do is I will create a development screen here that has on it just this one item. And this is my text template control. I've named it text template field. And I do all the styling that I want on this control. You can see that uh, my mouse, uh, my hover uh, changes for the hover fill color and the border color the rounded corners, it's all there in this text template field. And then when I am on my screen where I've got my form, then I simply reference it throughout. So, you know, here's my font, text template field dot font, my font size, text template field dot size, my color, text template field dot color, you get the drift. And then we're able to apply that to all of our inputs. It's not a perfect solution because you have things like drop downs that don't have rounded corners. And you also have uh, the chevron background and the color of the chevron <laughs> that has to take place. In my case, I just had a couple of these and there's only one form on this page. So I went ahead and styled one of them and then made the other five or the other four of these reference this first one I created. But if you had a bunch of drop downs, well then create a drop down template on your page. Uh, associate it with everything you can with your root, uh, you know, master text input, and then the things that need to be tweaked specifically for dropdowns, do that on that one. The concept is the same. Create one and then reference wherever you can. That's the tip there. And the last thing I want to talk about is just the general theming altogether. 
you know, a lot of you may say, hey, yeah, this is easy to do. I can do that. But how did you know to do that? What made you think, okay, let's do rounded corners and this lovely little uh, border around it? What made you decide to color the background the way you did where, you know, the text input field is, is slightly darker gray than the white behind it? What made you think to do a rounded corner and these shadows and a little border and these colors? Uh, I'm not a graphic designer. I wouldn't have thought to do that. Do not dismay because there's so many great resources out there to help you. You know, icons, for example, I don't use the out of the box icons. Well, where do you get icons? Well, here's a great tool, SysFunction Metro Studio. I just got put onto this recently. It's totally free, over 7,000 icons. And, you know, for everything you can imagine, I'm typing in Wi-Fi and here's all the Brian, did you just lose audio? Let's see, did I, somehow I can't hear him either. Yeah, some. Uh, it's funny. He just mentioned Wi-Fi, and uh, we lost him. Oh, he's checking his device settings. Okay, he sees the problem. Which is good. It looked like he was powering through. Right? He's just going to be like, "Hey." Yeah, yeah. Man, this is pretty amazing, though, right? Like, totally. It's great, looks... great stuff. Yeah, yeah. And and okay, again, I'm Ryan... switching. Oh, can you hear me? Yep, yep. You're back. I just I don't know what's up with my headset, but I just switched to my webcam audio. So sorry, you're gonna hear a little bit of a, a echo, but we're back. That's okay. so weird. Everything happens on one day, right? So SysFunction Metro, yeah, Wi-Fi. Yeah, yeah. Don't type Wi-Fi, it'll break everything. <laughs> so uh SysFunction Metro is a great source for icons. Um, but I will tell you what my favorite source for anything and all thing creative and inspiration is Envato Elements. Not a sponsor, but holy smokes, what a game changer. It's like less than 20 bucks a month for a subscription and tens of thousands, hundreds of thousands of resources that you can use for anything and everything, especially for Canvas app design. So let's go to icons here and 43,000 packs of icons that you can download and use. Almost all of them will be available as SVGs. Find your style, find your concept. It's all there. But what about your overall Canvas app design? Folks, big game changer. And do not be afraid. Don't feel like you're selling yourself short by doing this. Like, this is brilliant stuff. Graphic templates, UX, UI kits. Here are 53,000 different graphic designers, professional designers, who you can go in and have a licensed access to use their UI, UX kit. And let me give you a little tip here. Check this one out. This one looks strikingly familiar if you're taking a look at my Power App. In fact, this design right here is what I use as the sort of background and the inspiration for my design on this app. You've got, uh, when you look at the, the table of reservations, look how we've got this gray background for our sorting bar and the way that this is designed. It's basically just a knockoff of this. And I say that very proudly. I didn't waste hours and hours and hours beating my head against the wall to try to design something that I'm not gonna be great at doing. Find a design that works for you. Then you can mock it up in Figma. Figma for a single user is free to use. It's a great tool because I do have a background in graphic design. I'm a Photoshop guy. So this was my uh, Photoshop mock-up that I created uh, for both my tablet and then the, the mobile version as well. Mock that up, and then once you know what you want to create, then you can translate that into uh, your Power App, and you can see that's what we ended up with for the uh, desktop, and then there's our mobile design because this is a responsive app, of course, and so uh, that's that. So do not be afraid to use those resources uh, that are available to you. So quick recap couple of things to use. Use your HTML text blocks, CSS generators, your glass morphism, clay morphism, icons from SysFunction Metro Studio, and my all-time favorite, Envato Elements. Mock things up. Oh, I didn't even have time to mention it, but look at, you know, tell Microsoft Designer or ChatGPT to create a UI for you with all the specs you want. It does a great job. And then mock it up in Figma and Photoshop.